Come with me as we enter a kingdom filled with the ordinary. Some call them flies, others know see -ems. But this little creature won't get more than a second thought just by looking at it. But don't let appearances fool you. The importance of this little bug as a pollinator is linked very closely with its unfortunate fate, making it a true hero in the insect world. Our last fable is called the fungus gnat. Once upon a time, in the middle of a shaded grove, lived a tiny, indistinguishable little fly called a fungus gnat. The little fungus gnat spent her fleeting days guided by scent. As her name suggested, what she searched for was the pungent aroma of fungi. You see, fungus was the food source needed not for her, but for the cluster of eggs that she planned to lay that would soon emerge as hungry little pupae, ready to feed on the nutritious fungus that she had provided for them. This particular day, in late May, as the fungus gnat was flying through the forest, she suddenly caught a whiff of a delightful fungal aroma carried by a warm breeze. What a delightfully moist and earthy smell is carried by this breeze. I must find out where it is coming from. Completely taken over with desire to find the source of this irresistible fungal aroma, she found herself drawing closer and closer to a peculiar looking flower structure that towered above her. Known to humans as a jack in the pulpit, this intriguing blossom had quite a unique shape. The pulpit described the towering tubular structure, a green and maroon striped space with a hood that fell over top. Inside was Jack, a maroon colored knob called a spadix that contained numerous delicate flowers embedded within its flesh. As our gnat looked up at the unique wildflower in front of her, she thought, I wonder where the delicious fungus is. It must be inside of that large tube. Only one way to find out. And with not even a second's hesitation, she flew inside the space in search of the fungus within. What her little gnat didn't realize was that things weren't what they seemed, and that inside, she wouldn't find any fungus. Instead, she had just become the pawn in a sneaky plot designed for one purpose only, pollination. Yes, I made it inside. But wait a minute. Where's all the fungus? All I see is the inside of this weird flower structure. The gnat realized. Hmm. Oh well, darn. I was really excited there for a minute. That fungal aroma was so wonderful and inviting. It would have been perfect for my little larvae to feed upon. But I guess there isn't any fungus here after all. <laughs> oh well, silly me. I guess I'll just leave and try to find some fungus for real this time. The gnat then flew up to the top of the tube, but found herself a little disoriented. Hmm, I feel like I entered this way, but the roof of this blossom won't let me get out. The gnat grunted with frustration as she banged her body against the top of the vessel. After realizing that this wouldn't work, she flew back down to the base in frustration. After taking a moment to gather herself, she decided, hmm. maybe I'll just crawl up the sides instead. But as the captive gnat began to climb, she realized that the walls were quite slippery and she quickly slid right back down to where she started. In all of her struggles, she didn't even notice that each time she bumped up against the central stalk known as the spadix, she was being coated with a golden powder, the pollen. The fungus gnat slumped in frustration and sighed. Oh, bother. Well, now what am I going to do? As she was looking around at the base of the spade, she noticed a tiny beam of light in the far bottom corner. Oh, what's that? 
I didn't see that before. She drew closer and proclaimed, Oh, it's an opening to the outside world. I can escape. And with that, the tiny gnat flew through the hole, relieved that she was once again free to search for a moist, dark fungal mat to lay her eggs upon. Woo! <laughs> that was weird. I thought I was going to be trapped in there forever. <laughs> she chuckled with relief. As she continued to zoom around the forest, it didn't take long for her to catch another whiff of an earthy fungal aroma wafting through the air. My, how inviting it was! So she followed her senses, this time to another blossom that looked quite similar to the one she had just come from. This looks very much like the same structure I just visited. Mmm, the fungal aroma from this one is so strong. I think it might be even stronger than the time before. There must be some fungus in there that I can lay my eggs upon. Unable to resist the temptation, the brave little gnat flew right into a second peculiar wildflower. Although similar to the first, something was a little bit different this time, she sensed. And she was not wrong. In fact, what she had flown into was not a jack in the pulpit, but a jill in the pulpit. You see, this type of wildflower is dioecious, meaning there are male and female versions of the flower. This is uncommon in the plant world, where most flowers are perfect, meaning they have both male and female parts. And our little gnat will soon find out this is not the only difference between them. Hmm, wait a minute. Did this really happen again? I don't see any fungus anywhere. Come on! She yelled out in frustration. And with that, she attempted to escape just as she did before, flying up to the top and slipping off the sides of the large structure, her attempts getting her nowhere. All the while, without her noticing, she had been brushing up against the stalk protruding from the center of the vessel. But this time, instead of gathering more pollen on her body, she was now brushing off the pollen that she had gathered before onto the fuzzy stigmas that covered the fleshy spadix. At this moment, the role that she played for this wildflower had been fulfilled, as with her movements, she was pollinating the female flower. The fungus gnat, exhausted from her attempts to escape, rested once again at the base of the tube. Hmm, well, it looks like I'm stuck again, she sighed. And then she remembered how she had escaped before. Oh, that's right. There was an exit hole. She circled the bottom of the tube. Where was that again? Hmm, where was it? She wondered. She circled again, but still she couldn't find it. And again and again. Little did she know that she would never find it, because Jill and the pulpits lack the exit hole that males have. Hours turned into days, and days into a week, and she remained trapped inside of the wildflower. Now she was no longer a young little gnat, but had reached the end of her adulthood. Although she might not have asked to be a hero, she certainly had become one, giving her life to serve one noble purpose of giving life to another. Well, I sure am glad that I love the color purple so much. From her sacrifice, the ovaries from the female flower will ripen into bright red berries during the late summer and early fall to produce more jack-in-the-pulpit wildflowers for future generations to come. And that's our fourth and final story. Here's to our unsung heroes. Good luck, have fun, keep exploring. Why is it so drafty in here? Getting kind of bored in here.